Duffy for being here. Hello, thank you so much for being here. I am your host, Chris Duffy, and this is Wrong Answers Only. I am wearing a tuxedo because it's our first show of the year. We had to get a little fancy. And if you have been here before, you already know, but if it's your first time, this is a show that is produced by LabX, which is a public engagement program at the National Academy of Sciences. And for those of you who have no idea what that is, the National Academy of Sciences is a private nonprofit institution that gives the government objective, <clears throat> evidence-based advice. And LabX is the team at the National Academy that takes all that fancy science and makes it fun. They create video games, they create shows like this one, they create board games and video series to make that science digestible. And on today's show, you and our panel of comedians are going to learn all about volcanoes. We're also going to find out what our expert is like when she is not doing her research, what she's like at home. And I want to point out, before we get any deeper into the show, this is an interactive show, right? This is live. We're all people from all over the world, the internet, all over. Everyone is here. So we want you to be involved. We want to hear your jokes. We want to hear your questions. We want you to play these games right along with us. I already see some questions, some great questions about uh, volcanoes. Comment along in the chat and we will do our best to answer as many questions as you can. There's also going to be polls that pop up during the show. All that should be happening right down here. And listen, if you don't see it, if you're having trouble accessing it, maybe try um, leaving full screen. Sometimes that helps. If that still doesn't help, don't worry. You're going to have a great time anyway. It doesn't matter. Okay. That's enough preamble. Let's get into the show. Today, we have an incredible panel of comedians who are going to be playing with us. We have Danielle Perez, we have Aparna Nancherla, and we have Josh Sharp. Hello, thank you guys so much for being here. Hey, thanks, thanks for having, having me. Us. So let's find out who today's expert is. And listen, I could tell you about her, but better than that, let's have her tell you about herself. So here's a video. Pretty much every volcano will give some warning before it erupts, but it it can be tricky to figure out, you know, exactly when is that eruption going to start? How long is it going to last? Um, is it actually going to erupt? So one of the things volcanoes do is produce, especially in terms of earthquake activity, they produce a lot of false alarms, and so often, you know, it looks like the volcano might be getting to getting ready to erupt and then it calms down and nothing has happened. And that's actually one of the biggest open questions and one of the things I focus on in my research. How can we actually tell a signal that's a false alarm from something that's actually going to proceed to eruption? So it's, it's actually a very, very challenging um, thing to make these forecasts because yes, we have some insight and we see some consistent signals, but you know, the, getting the details out of that is still uh, something that we're trying to understand in our field. Hi, I'm Diana Roman, and I'm a volcanologist at the Carnegie Institution for Science. Diana, thank you so much for being on the show and for letting us talk to you about your work. It's really a pleasure. Hi, it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, what an amazing video. I love that techno music. Yes, upbeat <laughs> techno music plays. That is the official theme music of your research. Um, Excellent. So so panelists, you're going to get a chance to talk a lot to Diana over the course of the show, but this is your first chance to ask a volcano expert some questions. We call this, you do what? So panelists, what is the first thing that you want to know from a volcano expert? Um, what is the burning question that you have that you want to know? Aparna, let's start with you. What's your first question? Okay. One question I had was, can an inactive volcano come out of retirement and become active again? Like... Jay-Z retired from rap and then left again. You know, well, yes, the term inactive is, you know, a little bit of a, you know, volcanoes go through phases where they're kind of quiet or we prefer to say mm. dormant. Um, and then they'll wake back up and they go through cycles of that. And, you know, some volcanoes, ultimately the, the tectonic process that drives them kind of ends or moves on in that spot on earth. And then they're, they're kind of done, done. In that case, yeah. it's probably unlikely, but uh, yeah, no, they they like to nap and wake up and nap and wake up. Got it. Same, actually. Yeah, yeah me absolutely. Too. Same I here too. To, I relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> and Aparna, no, I have a question for you. I was actually I was eagerly awaiting which celebrity you were going to use as your comparison for that. Were there backups that you had instead of Jay Z? Others that you were considering? <laughs> who is my backup? Who I was trying to think of an actor. Mm -hmm. Who is retired? But then I was like, did Daniel Day Lewis ever come back? Maybe not. Yeah, he's deep. He's so deep in a part that he's not. He doesn't even think he's acting anymore. He's dormant right now. <laughs> he's dormant right now. Um, okay, Danielle, what's your first question for Diana? 
Okay, my first question is, can volcanoes create any sort of like precious gemstones or diamonds, things of value? Can we mine under volcanoes <laughs> and to get them? <laughs> yeah, well, so this this is a, a little far afield from what I do. I'm, a, I'm a more of a geophysicist than a geochemist, but actually, yeah, you know, um, a lot of um our uh copper mines um other precious metals are sites of old volcanism and uh there are some minerals in volcanic materials that are used as gemstones and can be quite beautiful so um yeah i think so um, maybe not dying well so diamonds are actually brought up from the deep part of the earth by a type of volcanism so they don't create the the diamonds they but help they really they're help like to, the fracking. yeah they help us they help get them on our fingers yeah okay wow uh diana i also love that you you have put the bar very high for our knowledge where you said like i'm a not really a geochemist i'm a geophysicist as though we yeah. that that distinction really means something to all of us here you really really hyper specific nerdiness and yeah uh, oh i know in volcanology we're, we're all none of us are just volcanologists we have to like sub classify ourselves to each other I can tell you for sure that many people in the audience are relating very hard to that, for sure. Josh, last but not least, what's your first question for Diana? Okay, not to be a size queen, but I'm wondering if there's a known like biggest eruption and then also how you even measure that. Is it height? Is it width? Mm -hmm. Is it volume? How do we quantify mm -hmm. how big an eruption is? Um, yeah, there's sort of, it, the answer depends on like the time scales. So at one point very early in the history of our earth, uh, the, there was a thought that the entire planet had what was called a magma ocean. So basically the entire thing kind of had a molten layer. So maybe you could think of that as like the one big volcano. Um, but more recently, you know, large eruptions tend to be much rarer. And, um, you know, I think we have a good sense of like when the really big ones were and, and um, you know, we have a scale. It's kind of like the scale for earthquakes. It's sort of a one to 10. Uh, that we What's it use. Called? Um, it's it's called VEI, the Volcanic Explosivity Index. And uh, maybe just to give you a calibration on that, um, so like Mount St. Helens 1980 was a five. Um, so people think of that as a really big one and it was actually kind of a moderate size one. And, and you know, most eruptions are ones or even zeros. Um, and very, very rarely do we get, you know, even the fives, I think there have been one or two in the past couple decades. So um yeah we you know we only see the big ones very very rarely well we're getting a lot of great questions from the audience so i want to just get a few in now and we'll we'll get more over the course of the show but but one is um from someone who's called themselves volcanoes are cool that's their username does diana have a favorite volcano <laughs> oh no this is the question that's like asking a parent which is their favorite child Mm. Um, you don't ask a volcanologist this. Um, the problem is, I, you know, ev every volcano I study becomes one of my favorites. I get, I do tend to get attached to them. Um, so I kind of have a handful and they're really all the ones I've worked on because they're all weird and cool and taught me lots of things and gave me adventures and, you know, helped us understand them. Um, I'm hesitant to name, but one of maybe I like to throw out some love for a, a little one uh, that's not well known in Nicaragua called Toluca, where I worked for almost a decade. Um, you know, it's it's kind of an underdog, um, but maybe that's, that's my own name. It's a favorite. Toluca. You know, I don't. Oh, Toluca. Yeah, I don't. Oh, I don't know what it means. Shout out to Toluca. Shout out no, to Toluca sounds like an indie darling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, for sure. Now I, I'm curious. You you were kind of like hesitant to name is that because you were afraid of offending the other volcanoes like what what was the concern i can't pick you know like okay, okay. My favorite i have i have i could if you said like favorite in terms of you know i it's a nice place to actually be out in the environment or favorite in terms of like the easiest data i ever collected or the you know I could I could maybe go there, but um, you know they're all like awesome in their different ways. What about least favorite? Oh yes, there oh, you go. Yeah. Tell us the, the worst mm. volcano. What was the rudest oh, volcano? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that's gonna get me in trouble with my colleagues. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> yeah, I'll, we'll also take your least favorite, favorite volcanologist. Like, I'll take either of those. Yeah, yeah I would love to know the least favorite volcanologist. 
Is or at your least least favorite, least favorite geochemist. You don't yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Geophysicist. Yeah, Smash a geochemist. Nice. But you can throw a geochemist under the bus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, well, we would my, never my, ask you to do that about a geophysicist, ever. Oh, yeah. never. Oh, honey. Okay. My, my husband's a geochemist, and I think he's in the audience. So maybe I'll, I could say he's my favorite geochemist, and, okay. and that's as far as I'll go. <laughs> okay, well, that's not very close to worst, but we'll, we'll take it. We'll take what we could get. Uh, a now, geochemist this, and a geophysicist? That's eruptive. Wow. That's, who would have thought it could ever work? Those oh, two. Um, yeah. Now, Diana, one of the things- it's like Romeo and Juliet. It is, it's so mm -hmm. true. Uh, the Romeos and the, the Montagues and Capulets of the, uh, of the geo world. We, um, we're, and I know many people in the audience are asking questions, great questions, which I promise we're going to get to. But first, let's move into another segment, which is, Diana, one of the things that we talked about during the pre-interview that I was really fascinated by is you were saying you often get really frustrated by the way that the media covers volcanoes, because in your view, they're very sensationalized. Like, you told me that you feel like there's a lot of clickbait out there. Is that true? Would you say that's representative of how you feel? Yeah, there's so again, this kind of comes back to what I was saying about like most eruptions are are small and still interesting. And I, you know, I see a lot of um, certainly there's a lot of great media reporting on volcanoes, um, but you, you kind of see some headlines sometimes that are just like death and destruction. We're all going to die. And I just feel like it kind of gives the wrong impression of you know, how, how volcanoes work, that they're not always, you know, doing like their worst. Um, and they're not always, you know, completely catastrophically dangerous to the entire planet or to a, a, a region, you know, so um, it, it, well, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it, again, maybe, maybe not as fair to the little guys, the little volcanoes and the little eruptions. Well, I, after you told us that, we did a little research, and and here are some examples, and and these are just the ones that we found right away. And comedians, feel free to react to these, but these are these are not edited in any way. This required almost no digging. Um, let's look at the first headline that we were able to come up with here. Deadly Yellowstone supervolcano could cause a nuclear winter and kill ninety thousand. That's that's just the headline right there. Um, and okay, based on what, could be, could be fair, 90,000 what? Okay, that's true. Could be 90,000. What What would be a good 90,000? Mosquitoes, I guess. Ants. Oh, Ants. mosquitoes, mosquitoes is better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, this was another one we found really right away. Nine cities that could be the next Pompeii, which really... <laughs> Uh, hits... That's a list I want to be on. <laughs> that's a list you want to be on. Put us on that list. <laughs> I also think the great part about this one is like the headline is one thing, which is extremely clickbait, but then also the graphic that they mocked up here is just fantastic it's because powerful. That, that is a volcano erupting in the middle of a very big city. Is that Manhattan? It does seem like a volcano shot up in the middle of, of Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then on the last one. Tonga volcanic blast reshaped Pacific seafloor, exclamation points. Other scary facts about unprecedented lava horror. That you don't is often like, see mid-headline punctuation. That's I know. know. That's... You're really, this is like full on straight out of a celebrity, uh, you know, uh, tabloid. This is a tabloid for sure. Lava horror is a new genre of horror. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, I, Diana, like those are extreme. I mean, we all can agree that those feel like pretty wild. Why do you think sensationalism is a problem? Why is why is it actually an issue if they're if they're going that sensationalistic? Well, so the the, the thing that catches my eye in, in at least two of those headlines is the word could. You know, there of course, you know, a lot of things could happen. And um, you know, Yellowstone gets a lot of this. And actually, I think that article was triggered because there was paper that came out that um, you know, was quite technical and quite interesting, but it sort of suggested that there might be a tiny bit more magma under Yellowstone than we previously thought. And that sort of immediately went to like the extreme of this sort of worst case hypothetical for which there's absolutely no scientific evidence. In fact, the paper actually makes the point that it's still not enough magma to erupt. So I feel like that, that use of that word could and sort of always going to the worst case scenario doesn't represent you know, the, the actual realistic range of, of outcomes. 
So we've actually gotten already a bunch of questions about Yellowstone. So let me just read them and you can kind of like choose which ones you want to uh, respond to. One is, um, is it possible that there will be volcanic er eruptions in Yellowstone National Park? And then a uh, from a different person, if Yellowstone erupted, would a part of you feel happy slash excited? <laughs> Um, okay, number one, yes, Yellowstone is likely to erupt um, at some point in the future. It's it's still driven by an, an active, what we call a hot spot, a, a plume of magma. Um, that eruption is very likely to be small. Um, in fact, most of the recent eruptions of Yellowstone have been very tiny. Um, there's no indication currently that that eruption is going to happen anytime soon. Um, there are instruments throughout the park and we would expect signals, but again, the likelihood is, you know, that it's going to be a very small eruption. Um, and this could be decades, centuries, who knows from now, because there absolutely is no indication and volcanoes will give us, you know, a decent amount of warning before they do even a small eruption. Um, question number two, actually. Yeah, this it, is it the real one, the juicy one. Yeah, well, it sort of hits on the tension of being a, any kind of disaster scientist or, you know, natural hazard scientist in that, um, you know, there's a, a little part of you that's like, ooh, data, you know, whenever something erupts. But, you know, you also are dealing with something that is, you know, potentially hazardous and if nothing else, unpleasant um, to people who live nearby. Um, they may have to evacuate or, um, you know, they may just be feeling the effects of, um, you know, the volcanic gases in the air. So it's sort of like hard to be happy, but at the same time, you know, every eruption, we tend to learn a little more. So it's kind of like, eh, you know, yes and no. Is that a okay. cop-out answer? <laughs> You're very diplomatic and very nuanced. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good thing for a scientist. Okay. A, a related thing is someone else is asking, what do volcanoes smell like? <laughs> oh, yeah. Rotten eggs. They're really stinky. Um, yeah. And it stays in your clothes and your hair. Like I pull out my boots and I, you know, that I wore two years ago. It's like, oof, you know, the smell never goes away. Um, yeah, it's, it's, they're not very sweet smelling. Well, panelists, I think we, we know a little bit about sensationalism. We know a little bit about what the clickbait headlines already exist. So let's play a game called Burning Hot Off the Presses. And in this game, each of you is gonna to have to write your own clickbait headline about volcanoes. And then Diana, I want you to judge which one of these headlines you think would get the most clicks and which one you think is the closest to being scientifically accurate. So we're judging on two very different axes here. Um, so let's go down the line. Uh, Josh, give us a clickbait headline about a volcano. I wanna leverage the power of the could in a more positive direction as well. So I'm gonna go with, Yellowstone super volcano could kill 90,000 or could date Harry Styles. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm clicking that. I'll tell you what, you at least got one yeah. click for sure. Danielle, what do you have for us? Preppers prepare as Mount Vesuvius claps back at Andrew Tate by erupting all over his face. Wow. <laughs> An unquestionable positive for the world that that volcano did that. Good for it. And Aparna, what about you? Okay, uh, I'm going to go simple and classic. You'll never believe what this volcano smells like. <laughs> okay, so Diana, <laughs> we're going to you. Uh, which one would you uh, think is going to get the most clicks? Let's first just go pure <clears throat> popularity. Okay. Um, God, I'm going to have to go with Harry Styles there, you know, okay. like... I think I think he gets a lot of clickbait. He gets a lot of clicks, right? So yeah, and, and yeah, him and a volcano. That's that's probably something new. I love that it's like what can't Harry Styles do? It's like a volcano <laughs> dressed in women's clothing. All of his yeah. are very what, hot. What, what won't he do? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's true. Um, uh, Diana, are there any that you would like to, of these three? Are there any that you would like to debunk, or or that you even have follow up questions on? Um, I don't know that there, none of them, well, I don't think a volcano can date a human, but, um, okay. you know, I'd click it to find out if it could. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and yet you loved so many so much, you wouldn't pick a favorite. So yes. I don't know, I know. how you could have feelings uh, for a volcano. It's yeah. Like, it's kind of your way of saying like, I need to get out of the lab a little bit and like, talk to humans. <laughs> and, but, um, uh, you know, 
I have a follow-up question for you, I guess, which is, would you, if, if someone was, if a bad person was struck by magma, would you call that clapping back? Would you think that that counts as a form of clap back? You know, the volcano is going to do what it's going to do. I don't, I don't think they're, you know, I don't think they're malicious. They just do their thing. Um, so maybe that's, that's, you know, that's, I, I could, I could, uh, I could maybe take the volcano side there. Oh, I think we're all on the volcano side here, yeah. for sure. <laughs> okay. Thurnberg summoned the volcano. <laughs> yeah. And now uh, the other uh, the other axis here. Which one do you think was the most scientifically accurate of these three? I'm going to go with Aparna's because <laughs> I think she, she posed an interesting question, and it's actually you know it's a question that we often ask uh, in our field. We, we we will go out with instruments that kind of chemically smell the volcano, and the question oh. is, well, what what gases are coming out of this volcano, and in what proportions? And that's actually really important to understanding where the volcano is and its its activity cycle, um, maybe how much magma is there. So um, I think that's actually one that kind of translates to, to a lot of research yeah. that's going on in the field and a lot of a lot of you know what scientists will do to, to try and monitor and forecast eruptions. So. And uh, audience members, you have a, a poll that is up now, which is which one would you click on? So we're gonna find out from you as well. I do think, of course, Aparna is winning the most scientifically accurate based on the fact that it also contained no information, no single assertion. <laughs> yeah. Just that you would I caught that it. too. <laughs> there was a scientific statement. It was, you will never guess it. You, you, will, guess, you will guess it. it. You won't. <laughs> um, all right. Well, you know, we we were talking about your work, but it's such a visual field. Let's actually see some of what your field work looks like. So in this segment, panelists, I'm going to show you a photo that Diana shared with us, and you have to guess what is happening in this photo. This is Hot Shots. Okay. So just to set the tone, here is a photo of what Diana is doing out in the field. Here's one, just like a basic photo. And we can look at this one first. So uh, hot shots, there's Diana. She's, it's beautiful Vista behind her. She's carrying what looks like a large cooler full of drinks. She's having a great time, right? Diana, she gets down to real work too. She's not just out there wandering around with her cooler. And, and Diana, is this, is that actually what's going on in this, uh, in this one? What do, what do you have in that case there? So that's that's actually a survival bag. I, I wish it was a, a cooler full of drinks, but um, uh, we were getting dropped off by helicopter um, for a few hours at a time and kind of moving around. And so we had bags with us with tents and rations and some other survival gear in case, you know, it's a beautiful day in the picture, but the weather out in this area can change very quickly. So we need to make sure that if, you know, our helicopter can't get back for a few days that we're really set up to, to kind of stay and camp out um, if we need to. So not as, not as fun as drinks. And, and there, before you ask, there was no hidden flask in that bag for survival. It looks like a carry-on though. Part That's of the survival you don't kit. want them to lose your volcano luggage. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah compliant. Um, Okay, so panelists, we're going to show you some more photos and uh, do your best. Anyone, there's, I'm not going to call on you, just anyone shout it out. Do your best to tell me what is happening in these photos. What do you think is going on? Um, let's check out this first one. Okay, what do you think is happening here? Um, I think Diana is live streaming to TikTok. <laughs> yeah, she does definitely have, that's the, that's the official pose of TikTok right there. She just invented a new dance. Uh, are oh, great. I, I love that. Diana, is that is that close to what you're actually doing here? Yeah, no, I like that, though. It, it does kind of look like I've got sort of a, a beatbox, like 80s style there. But mm -hmm. um, no, I'm actually, I'm, that's one of my pieces of equipment. That's actually a, a computer that's in this ruggedized case um, that I'm, it actually failed. It, it was really tricky and always misbehaving. And so I don't know. I just, I, I finally gave up on it. I hiked it out um, from the volcano and, uh, you know, it was dirty and I was frustrated and I decided to just kind of commemorate the me giving up on this particular piece of equipment. Did you post running it to IG again. and go, thanks Obama? I, <laughs> <Was that> <laughs> <a question>? <laughs> <laughs> I think this is back. I'm going to date myself back in the Facebook days, maybe. So it was probably somewhere mm. like that. Yeah. Um, rapid fire question for you from the audience, just a quick one. Um, how many volcanoes are usually erupting at once or at, in a year oh. maybe? Yeah, so usually there's there's anywhere from 30 to 50 erupting at one time um, and that's very normal. Um, 
you can go and look online. The Smithsonian Institution has a great page that lists all of the volcanoes that are currently erupting anywhere on Earth and, you know, nice map of where they are. And, um, you know, yeah, you sort of hear about the bigger ones, but um, they're going on all the time and all over the planet. Wow. Okay, let's go to the next photo. Okay, what do you think's happening here? It looks like she's uh, digging some sort of hole. You're uh, hiding a dead body. Out this no one's gonna look for it in a volcano. They're just gonna mm. find a bunch of virgin skeletons. They'll assume it's one of them, right? That's it's right. the perfect crime. Yeah, All right, so crime. Danielle thinks that you're committing a crime that cannot be traced. Josh, what was your guess? I, I, I said here. as a former scout, this looks like a latrine break. Absolutely looks oh. like a latrine. <laughs> yeah. Either right. way, wow. they're both you're desecrating a body. <laughs> Either way, you're yeah, leaving some evidence. Uh -huh. disposing we can both of it. be right. Yes, there's no reason yes, you can't be using no. a, a makeshift grave as a latrine. So wow, now, Diana, would you, do you have anything so you'd like to confess? But and that's when I say, are they right? <laughs> would you like to tell us anything that? Uh, Keep in mind, there's no statutes of limitations on murder. <laughs> oh boy. Um. But I do think no, it depends so on I... where you committed the murder. So if you're on an island like in a volcano that's, you know, in the middle of nowhere, uh, in unclaimed land, I think yeah. that's actually probably yes. legal. Yeah. You know, of, of all the photos I gave you for this segment, I didn't think this was the one where you're going to try to get me in trouble. But um, no, I'm not disposing of a body. And um, basically what's going on is we had to rebuild a section of road. Um, you know, we were sort of driving up a road. Um, you know, when I go out to install an instrument, I'm not just taking that little computer, I'm taking multiple car batteries and solar panels and tool bags. And so we always try to like drive as close as, as we can because otherwise we're putting it in our backpacks and pumping it up the volcano. So this was right after the rainy season. And, uh, you know, we were maybe being a little too optimistic about like, oh yeah, the road should be fine. We'll just drive today. And uh, took it, I think, most of the day to try to build this one section of road up just so that we could get our truck through and, you know, it probably would have been easier to just hike from this point. But uh, it's kind of, you know, part of the job is we gotta, we have to get ourselves to where we need to be. And often that takes a lot of <clears throat> developing places that we can get through um, where there's no, no good road or path or anything. So uh, you'll see the theme in all these pictures that I'm really dirty, <laughs> basically. <laughs> I had no idea. I love that. That's such a fascinating thing to think like, you know, what, what does this elite scientist do in their work? And it turns out that part of it is like, you're fixing potholes and building a road. That's incredible. Yeah. Well, I tell all my grad students, like, you're going to come out of your PhD with some, you know, like real practical skills, you know, in case the whole academic thing doesn't work out, you're going to be able to mix concrete and like uh -huh. deal with rebar and stuff. Yeah. We do a lot of, we know it's serious. We do a lot of construction type activities. In fact, I uh, think, it's very physical yeah. labor out in the field. I think uh, if you have a theater degree, you can mind building a road. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, didn't I would say know that being like a volcanologist had so much to do with being a contestant on America's Next Top Model. <laughs> like <laughs> to get to the volcano, <laughs> you have to build a road. Yeah, <laughs> you have to get yeah. your photo at the end of the shoot. Ooh, <laughs> you need to be yeah. put through so a situation. And, and and what is it, you know, smize the whole time, right? Mm -hmm. You're oh, smiling you know. in that you know. You're smizing. Yeah, well, I'm always smizing. Well, let's uh, let's check out the next photo. Speaking of modeling. Okay, there you are. And listen, you will never believe what this uh, volcano smells like. I would say that might even be the title of this photo. <laughs> uh, what do you think's happening here? Oh, man. I think the volcano needs a latrine. Like that <laughs> volcano is going, going. Yeah. <laughs> that oh. volcano was just on hot ones. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this, this volcano is really unhappy. I, you know, now that you said it, Danielle, I can't unsee it. There's no way to unsee that. The yeah, it is, is, yeah. We're staring into the brown eye of the volcano. <laughs> Truly. The outfit is very school crossing guards. So I don't know. Yeah. It does feel like you're directing traffic here with the magma yeah. gloves. <laughs> All right. Well, Diana, what do you think? What's what's actually going on here? Um, how, how accurate were both of those? And and again, they both can be 100% accurate. Um, I just can't get over that sort of staring into the ground. Um, no, I'm not directing traffic. I'm, I'm 
basically just playing here. Um, this was a really fun day. Um, I was out with some people who were actually collecting samples of this lava to do chemical analyses. And I just really wanted to get a feel for like physically how gooey this stuff was. So this is just me kind of sticking a pick in it and kind of pulling on it like taffy, just so that I could kind of physically, you know, realize, um, you know, what the stuff I think about that, you know, I don't get to see very often is like. Um, and uh, yeah, it, you know, it was kind of more of a play day than real science. I think we Very can cool. all relate to playing yeah. Games yeah. over now, our faces yeah. completely nauseated. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All of us play yeah. with that well, hand over our face as we Yeah, let me well, let me actually let me clarify that. So um, you know, this is actually a volcano that isn't that gassy. Um, so, you know, in other cases, if I were this close, I might be wearing a, like a gas mask. Um, mm. This one wasn't that smelly, but this is really, really hot. This is among the hottest type of lava on earth. And so really the reason I've, I've got my face like that is because it, it's like a blast furnace. I mean, my, my face was burning and I was just trying to kind of keep the heat off my face, you know, long enough to grab some of this stuff and get out of there. Um, but you're right, it does look like, and I mentioned that it smells, but um, yeah, it's, it, it was hard to stand next to the stuff for more than a few seconds. Well, Wait, actually, let's, let me, question. oh, please, Danielle, go. Okay, so you're, you're playing with it, you're poking it with a stick. How long does it take, like, would it take that, the lava to cool from that? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, after you pull it out? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, when we sample it, we want it to cool really fast so that it doesn't, like, lose it's 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 like almost like soda you know it's got a lot of gas dissolved in it and we're very interested so we usually will like take a chunk and plop it straight in a bucket of water and then it cools very quickly but just that goo and I think I wanted to figure that out you know I, I think I could watch it you know over maybe five ten minutes and it was still sort of bendy a little bit so um it it, it takes a little while to kind of solidify um yeah so I, I'm also getting a few uh, rapid fire questions from the audience too. So again, if you give these fast answers here. Um, mm -hmm. Sure. So looking at that lava collection picture, is lava heavy? What did it feel like? Well, you said it felt like taffy, <laughs> but what about weight? Yeah, um, yeah it's really dense. Um, it's heavy. It's it's basically a rock. Um, so if you think about picking up a, a rock of that size, it's, it's pretty heavy. Um, and yeah, mostly I was just kind of feeling how gooey it was. That was the mm. thing I really wanted to get in my head. Have you ever had a chance to roast a marshmallow over lava? <laughs> yeah, of course. That's of course. like the first thing you do. <laughs> and then uh, someone's asking, will there ever be a submarine that can go into lava? Oh, you know, I, I think Elon Musk was probably proposing that at some point as one of his mm. projects, but you know, I'm, I'm not going to, hold out for that and i would say I on a technicality dumb. and i would gladly put elon musk in a submarine and prove that this is true try, any submarine yeah. can go yeah. into lava yeah. it just can't come try. back out <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah gladly elon if you're out there and you i know you watch please get in your sub and toss it straight into a volcano <laughs> do everyone a favor thank you bring us um, a sample while you're out there <laughs> yeah yeah give us a sample while you're out there um okay let's watch let's go to the next photo here we go Okay, what is going on in this photo as uh, we are looking at a puffin and we are not happy. What do you think is happening here? I think she, if there was a dot bubble, she'd say, oh, it's not a volcano, it's a bird. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, other guesses, any other guesses here? This, I don't, yeah. Did this sneak in your luggage? I don't feel like puffins <laughs> live where volcanoes live. But yeah. I don't I associate puffins, yeah, with the volcanic experience. No. I mean, I, I will say that the color of that puffin, the fact that it looks like it has something on its underside, makes yeah. me think perhaps this is, once again, Diana looking into the brown eye of a puffin. So that could also be it here. <laughs> uh, what do you think? Another is it? What's thing. actually happening, Diana? Yeah, well, you guys are all pretty close, actually. So... Um, Did not expect that. You know... <laughs> I, I did not expect this either, but, you know, we go out into the field and, and like often there's kind of biology in the way. Um, this is maybe one of my more adorable wildlife encounters that I had to deal with, but this little guy didn't get in my luggage, but he got, we were living on a boat and he got kind of stuck back in our state rooms and couldn't find his way out. And somehow I got elected as the person to 
um, you know, pick him up and help him get overboard. And he was not happy and I was not happy. And this may be illegal. I'm sorry, fish and wildlife, but you know, it's kind of like, you know, you have to sort of deal with the other stuff in the environment when you really want to be there for the volcano. Like, you know, sometimes we'll open up our cases and there's snakes or something, or you wake up and you want coffee and there's like a puffin in the stateroom and you just yeah. have to like stowaway. <laughs> yeah. Someone yeah. has said that puffin will not be taking that cruise again, and they are correct. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, one last question. Let's look at let's look at this photo. What do you think is happening in this photo? We've got a big old hole. What's happening in this hole? You guys are building your own volcano. <laughs> okay, Diana, is that right? Are you building your own volcano in here? No, and this is probably the one picture that's like me actually doing what I tend to do in the field. I'm burying a seismometer and um, I have a lot of pictures of that like my fun. butt next to holes because <laughs> this is like what I do. I dig a hole, I bury the instrument. I'm, I'm down there trying to level it and pack it in. And that's really how I get my data. So this is very typical. And uh, yeah, when I'm actually working, not playing on the volcano or dealing with the wildlife. And uh, so a seismometer measures like earthquake activity. That's what that is. I'm yeah. Sure. So this and is, how many this is an instrument that, yeah. As sorry, many as please. we can. Yeah, absolutely. As many as we can, but usually like six to 10. Um, yeah, they're, that's, that's, you know, a good enough number, but we always want more. Someone is asking, uh, how accurate are baking soda and vinegar volcanoes? Mm. Oh, um, yeah, you know, yes. Uh, so process that gets it bubbling in there, that's kind of analogous to how we think you know, like I said, magma is really kind of like soda. It's got dissolved gas and uh, a liquid. And so what you're doing with that baking soda vinegar thing is you're kind of nucleating the gas. You know, the same thing is when you're plopping the mento in the Diet Coke, you're sort of helping the gas get out of the, the liquid and, you know, do that thing. And that's, that's really actually how explosive volcanoes work. It's gas coming out of that, that magma. Um, so, yeah. Um, I, before we move into Great. And okay, so uh, we're... We're going to move into uh, another segment here in just a second. But before we do that, I, there, I'm getting a couple of uh, very good, serious questions from the audience. I don't want to just ask the funny ones, too. Um, although all the questions have been great. I'm not judging your questions. Um, a bunch of people are, are asking some version of um, whether volcanoes can be tapped into for energy whether and whether mm -hmm. there's sort of changes. Someone is asking, do you monitor changes in global energy budgeting due to volcanic eruptions over a year? And then someone else has asked, how can we use volcanic energy to um, uh, reduce climate change, perhaps? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. And actually spot on, you know, uh, volcanoes produce heat, uh, they produce energy, and um, it's, it's very much a viable source of, of clean energy. Uh, the country of Iceland, uh, a lot of their power comes from volcanic sources. And, um, uh, you know, it's, it's something that, you know, I think there's a lot of interest in developing in countries that have active volcanism. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a real thing. Um, and uh, do we monitor changes in energy? You know, I, I not, don't really know, you know, we know that volcanoes can kind of affect the climate a little bit. Um, they can, the amount of volcanism can sort of vary from year to year or even millennium to millennia, but um, it's a little harder to quantify, but, you know, we kind of on the scale of an individual volcano, we can get energy production out of volcanoes. Hmm. Okay. Well, um, I'm going to get to some more of your questions soon, but uh, right now let's move into another segment. And um, to set this up, Diana, well, you've talked a little bit about how there's all sorts of volcanoes. You, you have your favorites, you have your least favorites, which are still secret. Um, how similar are volcanoes to each other? Well, on one level, they're all really similar. Um, you know, they've kind of got the same set of physical and chemical principles that, that drive them. Um, but on the other hand, they, they all kind of have personalities. You know, they, some of them are very, they talk a lot, but no action. Some of them are very, you know, quiet, serious. And then when they say something, you know, it's like something to listen to. Some are very bubbly and always talking. Um, and so part of the, the big, you know, goals of my field of volcanology is to kind of understand what gives volcanoes those personalities and also how we can kind of see through that um, to understand more fundamentally how we can compare what we learn at one volcano to another volcano uh, that's not just sort of a, a, a you know one of its particular quirks um, per se. 
Um, and it's a lot of people actually, you know, so medicine, you know, we all have kind of the same organ systems, the same, you know, but we're all different individually because of our genetics and um, environmental exposure and our history. Um, and the goal of medicine is to try to, you know, see through that to some degree and kind of treat us all with systematic approaches. Um, so this is kind of, you know, a good analogy for volcanoes and, and the personalities are, um, you know, interesting, but also make it harder to say, okay, this volcano can tell us how this next volcano will work. Well, uh, I love that you gave us a good analogy for how uh, volcanoes <laughs> have different personalities, because now I would like to offer a less good analogy, which is that when you tell me that every volcano has a personality and that some are bubbly and some are like fiery, the, the analogy that I immediately thought of was the Real Housewives and how they each have their own personalities and they each have their own little introductions. And so panelists, I would like for you each to create right now your own volcanic personality give it a name, give your volcano a name. And then I would like for you each to do a real housewife style introduction with the tagline. So, you know, you walk in, you turn to the camera and you say whatever your tagline is. So this is the real housewives of magma. Okay. So panelists, uh, let's Danielle, you already got, you got the costume oh on. Let's, let's start with you, Danielle. Give us a, give us your uh, real housewife of magma. Who is she? <laughs> She's Vesuvia. And in the land of eruptions, I'm at the seismic shift. Oh, I love it. Wow. Oh, I love it. Okay. Uh, Aparna, you, what do you think? You ready to go next? I guess so. Okay. Hi, I'm Ash Boom Boom. You're either going to love me or you're going to hate me. Wow, Ash Boom Boom, very, <laughs> very much a, a, a non-literal name. I love that so much. And I'm ready. Yes, I'm ready. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. And Josh, Josh enter. Oh. Hi, I'm Erupta, and that's not rotten eggs you're smelling. I, there's a new volcano in town. <laughs> okay. Incredible. Incredible stuff. There is now a poll up. Who is your favorite real housewife of magma? And okay, Diana, you've now met each of these volcanoes. We have Ash Boom Boom, we have Vesuvia, and we have Erupta. Uh, who do you think you would most like to study? Who do you think you'd like to spend some more time with? Oh, well, you know, Vesuvia, <laughs> not just the fact that that, my God, that girl, that jacket, wow. <laughs> But also, you know, she's a seismic shift. So that, you know, that's my, that's my deal. I think I, I want to figure you out. Oh, wow. And now I do want to just big. <laughs> Please, Danielle, please. Vers Vesuvia, <laughs> would you like to, what, what do you have to say back to that? I would love to be studied. Um, you know, I think it's important. Uh, reality TV is, uh, is for everyone. It's for every volcano and happy to be on the inaugural cast, you know, Thank so that we so can much. be studied for future <laughs> generations. <laughs> yes. A and, cultural artifact. And now, um, Diana, I noticed that you didn't choose that you wanted to spend more time with the real housewife who said, it's not rotten eggs you're smelling. <laughs> it's a little terrifying. What am I? Yeah. Yes, I think that's I the question on all of our 100, <laughs> Mama. So watch it. Okay, well, and uh, any? Do you have any notes for Ash Boom Boom or uh, for Erupta? Mm, let's see. Um, well, I like that Ash Boom Boom's kind of like a little sneaky seeming. You know, like she's she's not gonna tell you, you know, exactly guess, what she's up to. You'll never guess who I'm dating. It's yeah. Harry Styles. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I also love that yeah, Ash yeah. Boom Boom's costume is a pop collar that needs to be constantly held up or yeah, else it will no, no longer pop. That's a, that puts the, yeah. she puts the effort in fashion for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, uh, yes. And, and maybe for Erupta, I don't know that I've ever seen a volcano in, uh, what is it? Leopard print, but <laughs> <laughs> you got to get in that submarine. You'll see it's right underneath. Yeah, um, there you go. Okay, well, uh, we're coming. We're coming right to the end of the show. So let's get a couple more audience questions before we wrap up here. Um, someone, I, now this is a question from someone who I believe you might know because it's framed in a way that seems as though you know them. And it also is framed in a way that it might be a trap. Hi, Diana. Have you been back to the islands of the four mountains? That seems like they know something I don't, I don't know. 
Go. You know about that body. Diana, don't answer. Don't answer it. <laughs> you know about the size uh, of the thermometer. <laughs> you know, I, I I may have I may have found myself there recently, and um, yeah. Uh, hi, you know, what does, John what does this or mean? Terry? Or... <laughs> this means something um, to so, you that it doesn't mean to me. Yeah. So the islands of the four mountains. Actually, uh, quite a couple of those pictures that you guys were looking at. Is, this is a volcano up in the Aleutian Arc in Alaska that I've I've been really interested in lately, and a group of us have been studying. Uh, to try to understand basically how big this system is. So, um, you know, it's got an active volcano that's kind of small, but there's some thinking that it might actually be, you know, maybe a bigger interconnected system. So we've been doing some uh, work up there, both with instruments and also looking at some of the, the kind of geology of the islands. Um, so I was just there in September with a, a big team. I'm suspecting it's one of them. Uh, and then uh, some of some of those guys will be back uh, hopefully next year to pick up the instruments and do a little more work. So um, if it wasn't yeah, it's, them, it's, it certainly would be almost terrifying for just a random stranger on the internet to say, "Have you been it's back to the puffin, island of the island. Island. <laughs> trying to get back? Maybe Take me back. Volcano. I know where you were Maybe last." Time. <laughs> no, that's a little creepy. <laughs> but hi, whoever you are. So, and okay, someone's asking, to what extent do volcanoes follow the movement of the Earth's tectonic plates? And does that movement explain why volcanic activity in Hawaii has moved southeast? Now that is, I will, I'm gonna allow it because it is a question, but it's right on the line of, I am asking a question that is telling you the answer. Yes, um, well, Hawaii is a type of volcano that stays sort of stationary in its root and then the tectonic plate moves over it so you get these nice chains and you'll see those throughout the pacific um but other types of volcanoes are on the edges of tectonic plates so the ones like hawaii they're kind of in the middle they're away from the boundaries but um other volcanoes actually form at the edges of tectonic plates so they're they're actually pretty well correlated one way or another whether you know you sort of see the line that's the the direction the plate's moving over a stationary spot or they're kind of on the edges of the plates where the plates are undergoing a certain scale of, of a certain sense of movement relative to each other. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm gonna let one, we're gonna get one more audience question and then we're gonna move on. Um, last audience question here. Do you think that increases in, uh, well, these are two that are kind of related. One is mm -hmm. how has climate change impacted volcanic activity? And do you think that increases in deep sea temperature are going to influence temperature changes in the earth's crust? Hmm. So this is actually an emerging field of research, whether or not, so we do have evidence that some large eruptions can influence climate, but whether it can go the other direction is a, an emerging question. And there's some evidence that maybe as you unload large ice sheets, as you move out of glacial cycles, that unloading might actually help bring about more volcanic activity. Um, so that's kind of the, maybe the the current like understanding of how a mechanism for that. Um, in terms of um, seafloor warming, I'm, I'm not really sure there's evidence there that that kind of, you know, would, would trigger additional volcanism. Um, it's a little outside my field. Um, and I think part of the problem is that that's a very inaccessible part. So actually we don't know a whole lot about uh, the type of volcanism. We don't actually know often when there's an eruption um, that's submarine because they're just, you know, they're very hard to see. Um, so it's a little harder to sort of make correlations there with changes that are happening in other systems on Earth. Great. Um, comedians, any other questions before we move on? Okay. Um, well, we are going to wrap up in just a moment then. So Diana, we're coming to the end of our show. And before we come to the end, let's check in on the score. It looks like Danielle Perez has the most points. And Aparna Nangela has the least. So the show is called Wrong Answers Only. Aparna has won. And Danielle, you have lost. Next time, do worse. The only person who has really, truly lost, Josh, next time, do better or worse. You got to pick a side. And before we go, good, Di Josh. <laughs> Diana, before we go, what is it that you hope audience members who are out there watching, what is it that you hope they take away from tonight's show? Well, you know, I've said it before, but I think the main message is that volcanism isn't a normal process on Earth. It's it's going on all the time, um, whether you hear about it in the news or not. Um, and uh, it's really interesting. It's often very small scale. It's very diverse in terms of how long. 
um, you know, what, what type of activity. And um, I encourage you to just look it up and, and see where volcanoes are erupting around our planet today. Okay, so panelists, that is what Diana hopes that you take away from today's show. What will you actually be taking away? Aparna, what are you actually going to take away from today's show? Um, I learned that volcanologists have many skills, not just studying volcanoes. They build roads, they free birds, and they smell bad. <laughs> <laughs> Danielle Perez, what are you going to take away from tonight's show? I learned that um, the seismic device the holes that you dig for them can fit a body and <laughs> okay it up there for a rainy day uh interesting a, a twist in the final moments of the show where i no longer suspect diana of being a murderer and now i suspect danielle <laughs> and josh sharp last but not least what are you going to take away from tonight's show i just like how much of volcanology is sort of elementary school playground skills of like digging holes and putting sticks in mud you know Seems like a lot of fun, honestly. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. Seems like a lot of fun. Uh, Diana, thank you so much for being here. Thank you to the three of you for playing. Thank you to everyone for watching. That is it for tonight. We are going to be back next month with another free streaming show for you in February. You can register for that show right now. You'll get reminders about it if you do. And you can do that at labx.org slash WAO. That's going to come up on screen. You don't even have to remember. The title is going to come up on screen with the URL. In the meantime, though, thank you so, so, so much to tonight expert, Diana Roman. Thank you to our panelists, Josh Sharp, Aparna Nancherla, and Danielle Perez. And thanks as well to everyone at the National Academy of Sciences and LabX and our back-end folks, Amechi, Jesse, Amir, Dempsey, Mario, and everyone on the tech team. I am your host, Chris Duffy, and this has been Wrong Answers Only. Find out more about this show and future episodes online at labx.org. Have a great night. Stay safe. Don't fall into a volcano.